All right then, gang, so we've seen how to animate a motion element using this animate attribute right here, which is just equal to an object which represents the different key value pairs that we want to animate, the different CSS properties, if you like. Now, another attribute that we can use with frame of motion elements is the initial attribute, and this allows us to set an initial state of an element from which it animates. So to demonstrate that, I want to move over to the header component right here, and I want to animate this thing, the title. So first of all, I need to import motion from frame of motion. Then I need to turn this into a motion div. So I put my cursor there and at the closing div as well, and say motion dot. And the next thing we need to do is add on an animate property. So animate and I'm gonna set that equal to an object whereby I'm setting the Y coordinate to minus 10. Oops, so minus 10. Now, if I save this, check this out in a browser, it animates up a little bit. But what I'd like to do is let this be the ending point, but the starting point be not down here in its original position, but way up here off the screen. So to specify that, I can use an initial attribute. So I can say initial is equal to again an object and specify what the initial starting points of these different properties should be. So I could say for example y is going to start at minus 250. Now that should be way up off the page and if I save this now and come over here and refresh then it animates from way up off the page down to minus 10. So this right here is saying where we should animate from originally and this is where we should animate to. Okay, so that adds a little bit of flexibility to this animation because we can now control the start point and the end point. Okay, so now we know that, let's add this to another couple of things. So I'm going to go to the home component again, and this time, this motion div right here, I'm going to animate the opacity. So I'm going to say that eventually we should animate to an opacity of one, which means fully visible. But I now also want to add an initial attribute equal to an object whereby the opacity starts at zero. So we can't see it at all to begin with, then it animates into an opacity of one. So if I save this and preview, we can see now it was very quick and we'll control that quickness and transition later on. But we can see it quickly animate from an opacity of zero to one. I'll refresh so you can see again. There we go, okay. So let's do one more. I'm going to go to the base component now and I'm going to animate this button at the bottom. So remember, this button only shows when a user has selected a base. So let me demo that. I'm going to go to the base and you see no button, but when I select a base, then the button shows and that's what I want to animate. Now I want to animate it from way over on the left to the right. So when it enters the DOM, it's going to go zoom over here. All right. So let's do that. Now I'm going to animate the div right here. The first thing we need to do though is import motion from frame of motion, then make this div into a motion div. So motion dot at the start and the end. And then I'm going to add on an initial attribute first of all. And that's going to say that the x coordinate will be in a string minus 100. VW. I'm using a string because we're using units here, right? If I just left it at minus 100 as a number, then that would be in pixels. But I want to use VH, which is viewport width. That's going to take it way off the screen on the left, and that's going to be the starting point. Now, I'll add an animate attribute whereby I set the X value to be zero, which is the position it's in right here. So let me say zero. And by the way, in case I didn't make it clear enough before, this is an offset value. So if I say zero, it doesn't mean zero pixels on the left over here. It means it's going to move zero pixels from its position right here, its natural position in the DOM where we've positioned it. So I'm going to save this now and hopefully this should work. So we don't see it. And if we click on something, now it zooms in and it does that animation. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so that's how we set an initial attribute. And remember, that is where the animation starts or animates from. And we use the animate property right here to control where the animation ends or animates to. 
Now, in the next video, we're going to look at how the transition works by looking at the transition attributes that we can apply to these motion elements as well.